Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a frequency counter from Savanko model FC6A. I don't know, is this from 1980 something? We got two different ranges, HF and VHF, variable gate time and some sensitivity I guess, right? It's not really telling me a lot here, but I can see we got six digits. And I think it looks a little bit like those intelligent, um, really, really cool LED seven segments. Here on the back, we can see a little bit of the specifications. It says that the HF input that is 10 Hertz to 45 megahertz and then we have a 5 megahertz band where we cannot measure anything and then the VHF range is 50 megahertz to 250 megahertz I hope there is a little overlap in reality right well that is something we're gonna go and figure out in a second I'm a little bit worried about this modification. Somebody put in this connector instead of another connector. I think there's a regulator in here or something like that. And they forgot to put a sticker on about how, what is plus and minus. So I'm always afraid of those connectors. You never know what to find really. So I think we should uh, open it first and then uh, have a little look. This is going to be real fun to show you. I, did I say something about 1980? I think it's... I really enjoy those little guessing competitions I have every time I poke around in some new stuff. I think I see a 1979 on that one and also on that one, 79. And uh, a lot of stuff here is modified. Look at those! Super funny, funny modifications. What exactly is going on here? So that's an op amp. Yes, it is. And I don't know exactly what is going on here, but you can... Ah, look at that. A little option. So a signal can either go via this little board or it can go directly. See, this connector can go there, and this connector can go there, and then you have a little bypass cable for some other funky uh, features. And this modification here is done much, much, much later. This is also a little modification up here, and this one says 92. And I think that one is the prescaler. So this is the, well, I don't know, this... Ah, originally you had a BNC connector here on the front frequency input, right? And that input, yeah, there was definitely a connector here. And then the prescaler was either here or this its signal goes to that one, probably, right? So I don't know exactly what is going on here. That will be display drivers. So it's obviously multiplex or something like that, right? Ah, uh, yeah, look at that. It is 3x2 multiplex because we got some multiplexing transistors and we got some resistors here and here, right? So it's, uh, yeah, or two, yeah, two drivers for the cathodes and then that will be for the anodes. So it's, uh, ah, it's a 3x2 multiplexing counter system interesting and some oki uh, special chips <laughs> oh yeah did did i tell you about that i was um afraid of the input connector here look my assumption is definitely correct see this is the center pin center pin is the black wire that goes to the center pin of this regulator so that center pin here is definitely the negative and then the outer ring of your DC connector that is your input no 
serious diode or no reverse diode, no fuse, no protection whatsoever. First time somebody's doing this wrong, they're going to blow up something. There's a diode here, but that is probably after that one. See, it's not connected to, uh, to anything. Oh, man. The circuit board isn't even mounted. Yeah, so that is um, something to worry about. Well, let's try and power it up and see if it blows up. Well, let's try and play with the first power up. Uh, oh, there's a power switch. Oh, nice. Let me try and give it four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I can see it's using exactly the same current. So that is, it is definitely working. Oh, look at that. It clears the display every second. And there's a little blinking dot here that shows it is gating every second. How nice. I'll try and find a signal. Those are really beautiful, the LEDs. That was a little bit of a surprise. It actually looks like it's working. I finally figured out what is going on. So here's a little amplifier, a little op amp amplifier, right? Where you can put the offset voltage or the trigger point in here. And then it's, of course, going to a normal um, counter chip like that, right? So, of course, the input needs to be TTL compatible input. So what I did is, this is 100 kilohertz input. So here's 100 kilohertz and... Uh, Let's try and give it 200 kilohertz. See? So there's something going on here. All this divider and stuff like that. And then it's reading out 600. So I think this is this has been used um, by a radio amateur to read out the receive or transmit frequency. Um, because this, there's a subtract, as you can see here, right? So it's, of course, for IF, and uh, you subtract or add your IF, and then you can transmit on this frequency instead of what it is you're measuring, right? So what your input, then it's, this is doing the math, and this is, of course, the offset is done here by all these funky timers, all this little modification, and this explains exactly why it's doing um, 6,000 instead of 100 kilohertz. So, um, yeah, that, that is definitely how it uh, is. So here is uh, 90, 80. <laughs> there is uh, clearly a way that is 60 kilohertz. And 50 kilohertz is 3000. The timer uh, readout here also works. See, if I go here, it goes really, really fast. That's quite nice. And here is 10 kilohertz. Yeah, whatever. This thing really works. There's not a lot more to say about it, really. So, thank you for watching. That was a short one. I'll find something more fun to play with tomorrow, I guess. I don't know. Ha, ha, ha.